Today, we're going to go over one of the most common questions my patients ask me. Should you do bed rest after an embryo transfer? We're going to cover the myths, the facts, review evidence, and at the end of this discussion, you are going to know if bed rest is right for you. I'm Dr. Laura Shaheen. I'm a double board certified OBGYN and reproductive endocrinologist doing embryo transfers for over 20 years. And I have absolutely seen recommendations change over those decades. But today we know so much more about rest after embryo transfer than we ever did before. And I'm excited to teach you about it. I love educating. If this is your first time finding the channel, welcome. Be sure and subscribe so you get my weekly videos all about reproductive health. There are two other ways to stay in touch. Listen to my weekly Baby or Bust Fertility podcast and sign up for my newsletter. It's a weekly newsletter. Link in the description. You get fertility news. You get information, educational content, and recommendations that I make every single week. Embryo transfer is a crucial step in the IVF process. And for years, the assumption was that bed rest afterwards was essential for success. Recent evidence suggests otherwise, and today we're going to separate fact from fiction. Today we're going to review four main topics. Number one, why is bed rest recommended after embryo transfer anyway? Kind of what is the theory? Topic number two, what does the evidence say? Does this really help? Topic number three, what should you do? If bed rest isn't maybe the right thing, what should you do after your embryo transfer? And number four, I'm going to answer some common questions that patients ask me at their embryo transfer. Now stick around to the end of this discussion where I will review exactly what I say to patients at the embryo transfer, how I counsel them myself. And listen, your personal situation is between you and your doctor. Definitely talk to your doctor and your team about what they recommend for you. But I'm happy to share with you what I tell my patients. Topic number one, where does this theory of bed rest helping embryo transfer come from? Well, it's just kind of logical. You know, you come into the clinic, you are not pregnant. We are putting an embryo into the uterine cavity and you are leaving pregnant. It is so high stakes. It is so um, important. It's such an incredible step. And patients and doctors and nurses and everyone alike wants to do everything to ensure success. And so it's really normal to think like, okay, uh, we put the embryo in now. I don't want it to fall out. So if I just sit here and rest, you know, stay horizontal after the embryo transfer or go home and do bed rest for a week, I'm sure that's got to help with success. It's just sort of like a logical, normal, rational assumption. So that's kind of where it comes from. In the early days of IVF, doctors used to admit patients to the hospital after embryo transfer and have them lie flat for weeks, like two weeks until the pregnancy test. So that is extreme. We're not doing that anymore. But in the beginning, before we knew, that's what we used to do. And it's gradually with more and more experience over the last 50 years, more and more evidence, we have realized that this strict bed rest and restricting people from moving after the embryo transfer is not as helpful as we sometimes might think it would be. And the evidence is really supporting that we should think about this differently. So topic number two, what does the evidence show? I'm going to go over two important studies with you because it makes so much logical sense to say, hey, I don't want the embryo to fall out. I want to just stay horizontal. I want to stay here as long as possible. Or I want to go home and just lie in bed for two weeks until I get my pregnancy test. That makes logical sense. But what does the evidence really show? Again, I've got two studies that I want to share with you that is going to help you think a little bit differently about this. The first study is the one I want to share with you that changed my practice. So in 2013, a landmark study came out in the journal Fertility and Sterility, which is the academic journal of the American Society of Reproductive Medicine, looking at this question. It was a randomized controlled trial looking at after embryo transfer, should somebody lie still and be horizontal and have bed rest for a few minutes after their transfer, or should they just get up right away? So they're asking a very specific question. When people talk about bed rest after embryo transfer, there's kind of the question, well, immediately afterwards, like, should you lie still for 20 minutes, 30 minutes, whatever, and then get up and go about your day? 
Or like when you go home, should you just have bed rest? We're really talking about the immediate uh, movement and activity after an embryo transfer when we're talking about these studies. That's much easier to study and it's kind of really, really helpful. Gives you a little bit more insight. So this 2013 landmark randomized control trial really changed how I practiced. So what happened? So this was a study with 240 patients that were randomized to either resting for 10 minutes after their embryo transfer or getting up right away, emptying their bladder, and leaving the clinic. Now, this was only studied in patients that had embryos created from donated eggs. What they're trying to do when you're doing fertility testing, sometimes you'll test in this patient population or donor egg population because you're trying to eliminate some other egg issue factors and trying to sort of uh, make it limited group of patients that you're studying, trying to limit some factors that can affect um, outcomes. And so again, this was 240 patients. All of the embryos were created from donor eggs, so a very high success population. And half of the patients um, after the embryo transfer, lay flat for 10 minutes, which was standard at that time. And the other half were said, okay, go ahead and get up, empty your bladder, and go on about your day. So the results of this study showed a higher live birth rate in the patients that stood up right away. Live birth rate 56.7% in the patients that got up right away versus 41.6% in the patients that laid flat after their transfer for about 10 minutes before they got up. Uh, and this was statistically significant. And the other thing that they looked at was miscarriage rate there's actually a lower miscarriage rate in the patients that got up right away after their transfer. It was 18.3% compared to 27.5% in patients that laid flat after the embryo transfer. Now, the difference in the miscarriage rate was not statistically significant. So the authors conclude that the statistically significant higher live birth rate in the patients that got up did not lie flat after the embryo transfer, confirms that 10 minutes of bed rest immediately after an embryo transfer has no positive effect and the fact can be negative for outcomes in patients who are doing IVF. And they specifically say with egg donation because that is the group of patients they were studying. But this really changed how we practiced. The second study I want to share with you is a more recent study that's combining a lot of data but looking at the same question. This was published in 2022 in the Journal of Assisted Reproduction out of Brazil. It's a meta-analysis, meaning it's combining outcomes of multiple different studies. They included four studies, but it's a total of 21,000 patients that are included if you combine all of this data. And they too showed a higher live birth rate when patients were not encouraged to have bed rest right after the embryo transfer. So no bed rest after the embryo transfer, live birth rate 52.5%. And if they waited and laid flat and had bed rest right after the embryo transfer, the live birth rate was 43.6%. They conclude the odds ratio was 0 0.77, saying that there was a 23% lower odds of having a live birth if you laid flat after your embryo transfer. And the confidence interval, so the confidence interval of that odds ratio crosses one, so it's not a very powerful conclusion. I don't want that 23% sticking in your head, but just the overall conclusion with four randomized controlled trials, 21,000 patients going through and trying to answer the question, should you have bed rest after your embryo transfer? The results is a resounding, no, you don't need to. Topic number three, so what should you do instead? Well, I tell people that, you know, you can rest and relax for a minute. Like, it's so amazing. You just had an embryo transfer. I'm going to step out, just take a couple of deep breaths, but you can absolutely sit up right away, get dressed, come on out, find the bathroom, go home, rest and relax. You do not have to lie flat and feel like that is going to improve your chances of success with an embryo transfer. Three common questions that patients ask me at the embryo transfer I want to answer for you here. Number one, will moving around or sitting up cause the embryo to fall out? Answer, no. Question number two, how long should I rest after the embryo transfer or after I get home? Answer, you can get up and go to the bathroom right away and then go home and just have a restful evening. Question number three, can I go back to work the next day? Most likely, yes. Unless you have a very stressful, physical, strenuous job, 
Uh, we think of implantation happening the day of or the day after the embryo transfer. So going to work the next day is fine for most people. But if someone's worried that their activity level is going to be really intense or it's going to help them feel better, have a self-care day, and you're able to take the next day off, fantastic. So the final topic, how do I counsel my patients? So imagine that you just had an embryo transfer with me. It is my favorite procedure. It is just so magical to watch the catheter come into the uterine cavity and then place the embryo and seeing that flash. Um, it's a little air bubble that shows up white on the ultrasound. You can see that um, movement, that flash, and you're placing the embryo into the uterine cavity. It is just magical. I tell people, I'm like, I feel like fireworks are going off. You know, my heart is just bursting when I see that flash on the ultrasound. And afterwards, you know, we take the little catheters out. Uh, we give it back to the embryologist. They flush to make sure that the embryo was really transferred. And they confirm like, yep, we're all done. Speculum comes out. I help people feel more comfortable um, kind of setting the bed together. They're kind of relaxing a little bit. And it's like, congratulations. Everything went really well. And now I just want to reassure you that embryo cannot fall out. And you can do nothing wrong. And they usually giggle a little bit. And if you've watched my other you know, videos um, on YouTube talking about embryo transfer and what to expect, you know, there's a randomized controlled trial that shows humor or laughing at an embryo transfer improves odds of success. So I'm so happy when I make people giggle a little bit. And then I say, no, I'm serious. When you sit up, the embryo cannot fall out. When you get dressed, the embryo cannot fall out. When you go to the bathroom, and empty your bladder, the embryo cannot fall out. And I say, listen, we used to have people, you know, lie flat for 20 or 30 minutes. When I was at Stanford, we'd have bedpans. So people get to empty their bladder so they're a little bit more comfortable. I'm so glad that the evidence supports that we don't need to require people to do that. And the evidence actually shows when you're ready, after you've taken a couple of deep breaths, you can just sit up get ready and go. And that's actually going to improve your odds of success. I don't want you sitting here, lying here uncomfortable with a full bladder um, because you feel like you're supposed to lie flat. So I tell people that. And then I say, you know, as far as tonight, I just want you to focus on self-care. I want you to have a restful evening. Um, I don't want you to have to cook. I want you to order in. I want you, you know, if it's uh, partners, I, I say the person who just had an embryo transfer, I'm like, I want you to use this as an excuse to get out of anything you don't want to do, like for weeks to come, like can't do laundry, can't do, you know, anything around the house. Like Dr. Shaheen said, it's all about self-care. And so I kind of make it like a little bit of joke or something, but I just sort of say, you know, make it about you. We think that embryo implants today or tomorrow. So it's really nice to kind of take it easy and just focus on self-care. And then after that, you can kind of get back to your regular routine, you know, talk to your you know, team about certain questions about activity levels and things like that. But I say, you know, honestly, I mean, people get pregnant jumping out of airplanes. People get pregnant water skiing. You know, Serena Williams was eight and a half weeks pregnant when she won the Australian Open. Do you think she wasn't practicing when she had implantation a couple of weeks earlier? You know, I try to reassure people um, that it's okay to be worried. Oh my gosh, this is precious. This is the culmination of so much work and shots and appointments and you're kind of you're mentally you're coming into the clinic you're not pregnant and then you're walking out of the clinic potentially pregnant like of course you're going to want to do everything that you can you know that you can to ensure success like I validate those feelings but I'm like just think about it logically and what I don't want is people to be so stressed out that they bend down to pick up a book off the floor and they're like oh my god that's it you know I just ruined the embryo transfer it's like it's just not that powerful or like movement is just not that much of an implication. And so I just, I'm like, I want to be that little voice in your head that it's like, you cannot do anything wrong. Now, you know, you might not want to go downhill skiing the week after your embryo transfer or like run a marathon. Like think about the activity levels, talk to your doctor about those type of things. Uh, but in general, you know, light exercise, great movement, you know, a couple days starting after your embryo transfer. And then just really taking good care of yourself. And I'm just so, so hopeful that if you're in that two-week wait and you're getting ready to do your test, I hope that this message might be helpful for you. It's so tough. I've got another video here on YouTube that um, talks about the two-week wait and how, you know, some management tips that could be helpful. So I really hope that this is helpful. I want to share evidence. And then I also want to validate the feelings that you're 
wanting to do everything that you can, but I don't want you to walk around with this worry and like put yourself in this little like fragile bubble because nobody can live that way and it doesn't even make medical or scientific sense. Okay. Like this video if you learned something. Comment with questions that you have. Um, be sure and subscribe to this channel so you get my weekly videos all about reproductive health. And until next week, wishing you love, luck, and pineapples. Thank you.